When SpaceX's Raptor 3 engine remains the focal point of the space enthusiast community, dissecting and analyzing its incredible upgrades, SpaceX has already hinted at the next version, known as Raptor 4. Let's find out more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. So as we know, SpaceX has planned three versions of Starship. You got Starship V1, V2, and V3. Now, there are three different versions. Starship V3 appears to be a significantly larger variant than the other two. While Starship V2 is only a little over 3.1 meters taller than the total height of Starship V1, Starship V3 hits a height of 150 meters. That's nearly 30 meters taller than V1 and about 26 meters taller than V2. This considerable expansion of the Starship variant necessitates a new engine specifically designed for Starship V3. That engine is none other than SpaceX's new Raptor 4. But why would Starship V3 need a larger engine instead of continuing to use Raptor 3? Until now, SpaceX has been using Raptor 2 for Starship V2, but only for the ship section. The Super Heavy Booster for V2 has yet to debut, but is expected to integrate the promising Raptor 3. After all, Starship V3 will undoubtedly require a newer engine. Some may consider this unreliable since SpaceX has not officially announced a new generation engine. However, Elon Musk, SpaceX's founder, has indirectly hinted at this development. While Elon is famously inaccurate with his timelines, his statements often become reality sooner than later. This makes it reasonable to believe in this possibility. In April, speaking to the entire SpaceX workforce, Musk mentioned a future thrust level for each Raptor exceeding 330 tons of thrust. Right now, Raptor 3's thrust, as announced by SpaceX, is 280 TF. If adjustments increase thrust, as Elon suggested in October, the highest thrust level for Raptor 3 could hit 300 TF. Therefore, achieving 330 tons of thrust would certainly require a new engine variant. Back in August, Elon once again reminded us about a new variant stronger than Raptor 3, stating thrust will exceed 300 tons with Raptor 3.x. This ambitious declaration underscores SpaceX's relentless pursuit of innovation and performance improvement in engine development. Now, let's examine the progression of Raptor engine designs. Although we don't yet have an image of Raptor 4, based on improvements from Raptor 1 to Raptor 2 and then to Raptor 3, it's almost sure that Raptor 4 will be designed to be even more compact and efficient. If we consider that Raptor V1 has a mass of 2,000 kilos and VT 1,600 kilos, then it is plausible that Raptor V4 will have an approximate mass of 1,500 kilos. Coupled with a thrust of 330 TF, this yields a thrust-to-weight ratio TWR of 220. This figure is truly mind-boggling, especially when compared to the benchmark TWR of the Merlin 1D engine that stands at 180. The thrust-to-weight ratio is a critical metric for rocket engines reflecting their efficiency and power. A higher TWR indicates a more capable engine that can accelerate the rocket faster and achieve greater altitudes. In this context, Raptor 4's TWR of 220 surpasses the dominance of Merlin 1D, placing it at the forefront of rocket engine performance. Indeed, when we examine the thrust-to-weight ratios of various rocket engines, we find a fascinating hierarchy of performance. The Space Shuttle's RS-25 engine holds the lowest thrust-to-weight ratio at 73 to 1, then there's RD-180, 78 to 1, and then BE-4 at approximately 80 to 1. Though precise data for the BE-4 is not yet available, the F-1 engine boasts a thrust-to-weight ratio of 94 to 1, and Raptor 2 leads the pack with an impressive ratio of 107 to 1. Although detailed information about the Raptor 4 engine remains scarce, Elon's revelations signal a significant step forward in engine technology. Whether Raptor 4 will be SpaceX's final iteration is still uncertain, with the limitless potential of Starship and fewer constraints, SpaceX has the opportunity to continue exploring the boundaries of rocket physics. Each advancement brings them closer to optimizing thrust and efficiency, further advancing humanity's journey into space. Hey, if you enjoy this content, make sure you're liking and sharing Alpha Tech's video. Every like and share is a valuable encouragement for our team to work even harder. By the way, our team would like to extend a special thank you to everyone who helped us hit 100,000 subs earlier. Our next goal, 150,000 subscribers. Of course, we're striving to get better in every aspect, but we still very much need your support. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Thank you very much. 
All right, getting back into things, Raptor 4 will build upon the Raptor 3 variant that SpaceX introduced earlier this year. It's truly intriguing considering the public images and videos of Raptor 3 released by SpaceX already showcase an impressive and extraordinary design. This makes it certain that the future Raptor 4 will possess an even more insane appearance and capabilities than anything we've seen in Raptor 3. That said, since its debut, Raptor 3 engine has led the field in terms of technical sophistication and power among currently operational rocket engines. One of the critical advancements of the new generation of Raptor engines in general is their integrated cooling system. This reminds us of a type of engine previously mentioned in Walter Isaacson's bio of Elon Musk the LEAT or 733T engine. Frankly speaking, the V3 Raptor engine shares some similarities with the LEAT engine concept, but it's important to understand the distinctions between them. Elon confirmed this when Tim Dodd asked him, is the V3 the same thing as the LEAT 733T engine? Sort of the LEAT engine was, I think we will do that at some point, but that's like a, that's like a total tear-up. It looks like the LEAT engine, but it's way more expensive because it still has printed parts, for example. The LEAT engine represents a more radical departure from the current Raptor design. Essentially, a clean slate approach that would require a complete overhaul of the engine's architecture. The LEAT engine concept incorporates advanced manufacturing techniques, particularly the use of 3D printed parts. While this allows for more complex and optimized internal geometries, it significantly increases the cost of production. The higher expense is due to the specialized equipment, materials, and processes required for printing rocket engine components that can withstand extreme temperatures and pressures. In contrast, the next generation Raptor strikes a balance between innovation and practicality. One of its most notable features is the elimination of the need for an external heat shield. This is achieved through the implementation of integral cooling circuits throughout the engine structure. These cooling circuits are embedded within the engine components themselves, including critical areas like the combustion chamber, nozzle, and even the pre-burners and gas manifolds. This integrated approach to thermal management allows the engine to withstand the extreme heat of rocket exhaust without relying on a separate shield. As Elon also mentioned in his tweet, regenerative cooling and secondary flow paths have been made integral to the whole engine, thus no heat shield is required. Nothing like this has ever been done before. Furthermore, taking away the engine heat shields also removes the need for 10 plus tons of fire suppression behind the engine heat shield, as any gas leaks simply enter the already superheated plasma surrounding the engines, rendering the leaks irrelevant. Externally, this design makes the V3 Raptor appear simpler and more streamlined, as many of the visible cooling channels and external piping seen in earlier versions will no longer be necessary. However, this apparent simplicity belies a much more complex internal structure. The integration of cooling circuits into the engine's components requires sophisticated design and manufacturing processes. Each part must now serve multiple functions structural, propulsive, and thermal management, which increases the complexity of both the design and production processes. However, that is not a major issue for SpaceX. In addition to the integrated hardware upgrades, SpaceX and Elon Musk have designed the next-generation Raptor with fewer bolted joints, a significant improvement. The new design aims to reduce the number of separate components that need to be joined together. This is particularly important for hot bolted joints, connections that are subjected to extreme temperatures during engine operation. These joints are often a weak point in rocket engines, prone to thermal stress, potential leaks, and failure. By eliminating these joints, the engine becomes more robust and potentially more reliable. Fewer connection points mean fewer potential failure modes and less risk of leaks or structural weakness. Besides, SpaceX also strengthened more welded connections. Some parts of the engine will be welded shut without the use of flanges. Flanges are protecting rims or edges, usually on pipes or other cylindrical parts that allow for easy connection and disconnection. By removing flanges and welding components directly, the engine gains several advantages. First, reduced weight. Flanges add significant weight, which is critical in space applications. The second is improved structural integrity. A welded joint can be stronger and more resistant to extreme conditions than a bolted flange. And finally, reduced potential for leaks. 
Eliminating flanged connections reduces the number of seals and gaskets that could potentially fail. Overall, all these changes directly serve Starship as SpaceX aims to enhance the durability and reliability of the engine, ensuring it can withstand the rigors of repeated space missions. However, nothing is easy in engine engineering. Elon Musk said, The next-gen Raptor engine is actually a little difficult to service because there are parts that, are that don't have a flange anymore. It's just welded shut. In traditional designs, flanged connections allow for relatively easy disassembly and replacement of individual components. With welded shut parts, this is no longer possible. For repairs or inspections, technicians will need to literally cut open the welded sections of the engine. This is a more invasive and time-consuming process compared to simply unbolting a flange connection. It requires specialized tools and expertise to perform such operations without damaging other parts of the engine. This design choice reflects a shift in maintenance philosophy. Rather than designing for easy component replacement, SpaceX is prioritizing overall engine reliability and performance. The assumption is that with improved design and manufacturing, the need for frequent servicing will be reduced. It can be said that this new design by SpaceX and Elon Musk is a trade-off. SpaceX is betting that the benefits of a more integrated jointless design will outweigh the increased difficulty of repairs. This aligns with their goal of creating highly reliable, reusable engines that can support frequent launches with minimal downtime for maintenance. This underscores SpaceX's willingness to challenge traditional rocket engine design paradigms in pursuit of their ambitious spaceflight goals. It's a bold strategy that, if successful, could significantly advance the state-of-the-art in rocket propulsion technology. All of these upgrades will enable SpaceX to create a rocket engine that is not only optimized to the fullest extent, but also incredibly powerful. It incorporates numerous innovations and optimizations that push the boundaries of what's possible in rocket engine design. This high level of advancement is necessary to meet the ambitious goals of SpaceX's Starship program, which aims to revolutionize space travel and enable missions to Mars. If we look at the Raptor 3 variant with specifications of SpaceX, we see incredible numbers. It's really generating a thrust of approximately 269 tons and operating at a chamber pressure of 350 bar. By comparison, the closest engine to the Raptor that uses a phased combustion cycle with methane and oxygen is the BE-4, which is expected to produce about 245 tons of thrust. The special version 3 surpasses the popular rocket engines such as RS-25 with 190 tons and RD-180 with two combustion chambers. And the Raptor 3 engine outperforms its predecessor, the Raptor 2 engine, with a number as impressive as 18%. This substantial increase in performance is a testament to SpaceX's relentless pursuit of innovation and its commitment to pushing the limits of rocket technology. Indeed, 350 bar is a record-breaking number. It defeated all the most powerful rocket engines. It's surprising because the previously thought chamber pressure belonged to the F-1 engines that propelled the iconic Saturn V rockets during the old moon missions operating at just 70 bar. The RD-180 used in the Atlas V rocket has a respectable chamber pressure of 267 bar. Moving forward in the timeline, we encounter the RS-25 engine, the mainstay of NASA's space shuttle program, which only reached 206 bar. Of course, these aren't the final parameters of Raptor 3, Elon mentioned in the interview. So long term, we want to try to get the thrust of Raptor up to around 330, maybe a little higher, maybe 335 metric tons. So that'll take us to a 10,000 ton thrust at liftoff. This makes Starship's thrust nearly three times that of Saturn V. Crazy. Let's wait and see what happens with this new breakthrough of this new generation of engines. That's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.